seven-year-old girl shot and killed at a fast food drive through in the Holman Square neighborhood. Brittany Garzillo is live for us outside Strozier Hospital. Brittany. Well, Corey and Don, we've learned the name of that little girl, seven-year-old Jaslyn Adams. Her grandmother wants her to be remembered as a fun and lovable, free-spirited child. She says that Jaslyn was with her dad at McDonald's, something she loved to do when this tragedy happened. Her grandmother says uh, Jaslyn's father, Jonte Adams, was also shot and taken here to Stroger Hospital. The family says he is stable as they plead with the community to stop this gun violence. Please put the guns down. Our kids want to play. My kids can't even go out the door. Seven-year-old Jaslyn Adams killed in a shooting late Sunday afternoon at a McDonald's on the city's west side. Real sweet child. Today, we're diving into the heartbreaking story of Jaslyn Adams, a seven-year-old from Chicago who was tragically killed in a McDonald's drive through On April 18th, 2021, what should have been a simple outing with her dad turned into a nightmare when gunshots rang out, taking her life and leaving her family devastated. The shooting, which was aimed at her father, has sparked outrage and a call for change in a city struggling with gun violence. As we explore this tragic case, it's a powerful reminder of the urgent need to address violence and protect innocent lives. If you're ready to hear more about this chilling case, keep watching. This is a tragic story you won't forget. Let's begin. New here at nine, the national manhunt for the third and final suspect in the killing of seven-year-old Jaslyn Adams has come to an end. And WGN's Shannon Halligan has the details there live from our newsroom. Shannon? For the past three months, authorities have been searching for the last suspect involved in the seven-year-old's murder. Today, investigators confirmed he was arrested here in Chicago, bringing some relief for the young girl's family. Seven-year-old Jaslyn Adams was in the McDonald's drive through with her father on April 18th. That's when investigators say three suspects fired multiple rounds into the car on the city's west side, killing the seven-year-old. Jaslyn's grandmother, Lawanda McMullen, worried police wouldn't be able to track down her killers. When it first happened, yeah, I was like, you know, she's just going to be another case on the shelf. But like I said, when they caught the first two, I was, I was pretty hopeful that they were going to catch the third. In a city plagued by gun violence, where every day seems to bring another tragic headline, the death of seven-year-old Jaslyn stands out as a chilling reminder of how devastating the violence has become. On April 18, 2021, a little girl's life was cut short in a McDonald's drive through sending shockwaves across Chicago and leaving an entire community demanding answers. Before diving deeper into the events of that tragic day, it's important to first understand who Jaslyn was. She wasn't just another victim of a statistic. She was a vibrant little girl with dreams, joy, and a love for life. Jaslyn was known for her lively spirit. She loved dancing, singing, and spending time with her family. Described by her loved ones as a free-spirited, fun, and lovable child, she had an infectious energy that brightened the room wherever she went. Her family and friends affectionately called her Pinky because of her bubbly personality and love for the color pink. Like most kids her age, Jaslyn enjoyed simple pleasures, playing with her friends, attending school, and spending quality time with her dad. One of their favorite father-daughter traditions was visiting McDonald's. It was a treat that brought her so much joy, something so ordinary yet meaningful in her young life. But on that Sunday afternoon in April, what should have been a routine McDonald's run turned into a nightmare. It was around 4.20 p.m. when Jaslyn and her father, John Tay, pulled up to a McDonald's drive through in the Homan Square neighborhood on Chicago's west side. The tan infinity they were in rolled into line like countless other cars, waiting for their turn to order. But unbeknownst to them, danger was lurking nearby. In an instant, the quiet afternoon was shattered by the sound of gunfire. Witnesses described hearing a barrage of shots, over 30 rounds in total, raining down on the car. The back window was blown out, and the trunk was riddled with bullet holes. The attack was brutal and precise, leaving little doubt that this was a targeted hit. Inside the car, chaos erupted. Jaslyn was hit multiple times, while John Tay was struck in the torso. With his daughter bleeding next to him, John Tay tried to shield her from further harm but the damage had already been done. When police arrived at the scene, they rushed Jaslyn to Stroger Hospital, but it was too late. She was pronounced dead shortly after arrival, while her father was treated for his injuries and survived. 
Chicago police say the shooting happened at about 420 in the afternoon in the 3200 block of West Roosevelt. Video of the scene shows a car in the drive through riddled with bullet holes through the back window and trunk. Jaslyn's grandmother says she was with her father, Jonte Adams, when the shots were fired. Police say the two were inside of the car when the man was shot in the torso and the little girl was shot multiple times. Every parent that took a child to McDonald's to get something to eat, not to get some bullets. To the shooter, why? Why? If you had any kids, have you ever took your kids to McDonald's? Have you had some your kids to eat? A CPD unit on the scene rushed Jaslyn to the hospital where she died. You got cowards out here killing and shooting babies in Chicago. Totally, I want to say it another way, but it's totally unacceptable. Well, Corey and Don, we saw at least 40 evidence markers on the scene as area detectives were investigating. Of course, that investigation continues because police say right now no one is in custody. Jaslyn's grandmother, Lawanda, was devastated. Speaking to reporters with tears in her eyes, she pleaded for an end to the violence that was destroying their community. Every parent takes their child to McDonald's to get something to eat, not to get some bullets. She said, kids can't even be in front of their own door anymore. Her words were a heart-wrenching reminder of how unsafe life had become, even in the most ordinary settings. As the community reeled from the tragedy, Chicago police quickly launched an investigation. It was clear that this was no random act of violence. The shooters had a specific target in mind, John Tay. But why? To understand the motive behind this heinous crime, you have to look at the deeper issues that plague many neighborhoods in Chicago. John Tay, like many young men in the area, had a past. He was reportedly affiliated with gang activity, which made him a target in ongoing turf wars. While Jaslyn was an innocent child with no involvement in such matters, her father's connections put her life in jeopardy. It's a grim reality in places like the West Side, where gang conflicts often spill over into the lives of innocent bystanders. The hunt for the suspects quickly intensified. Surveillance footage, witness statements, and digital evidence started to paint a picture of who was responsible. Days after the shooting, police identified three main suspects, Marion, Darnell, and Devante. These men were allegedly part of the same gang and had a vendetta against John Tay. The plan was simple, ambush him and take him out. But in their reckless quest for revenge, they ended up taking the life of a little girl. A judge said there would be no bond for one of the alleged shooters, 21-year-old Damond Gowdy. Prosecutors say Gowdy sat in the front passenger seat before jumping out of the car to use a 40 caliber handgun to fire at the car with the child inside. Police found more than 40 shell casings at the scene. In denying bond today, the judge said Gowdy must stay locked up in order to ensure the safety of the public. Public. He's already on bond for four separate felony offenses, including robbery and gun possession. The judge said if he shot up at McDonald's while he was out on bond for other cases, he has already shown he can't comply with court rules. Court records show a judge put Gowdy on 24-hour home GPS monitoring for strong arm robbery back in September, but a judge then loosened those conditions in October so he could attend his brother's funeral. Today, his attorney said she can't effectively represent him on Zoom, and she wanted to be in the same room with him, but the judge denied her request. Police are still looking for the other shooter in this case, a man they say sat in the back seat that day and used a Draco AK-47 style gun with a banana clip. After a car chase on the Eisenhower Expressway, police already arrested the driver. Police say all three men who were in the car that day are in the same gang. Just before the shooting, the driver uploaded a video to social media showing all three of them in the car with guns. This case will be back in court on May 19th. Gowdy is to have no contact with any witnesses in this case. Marion, the first suspect to be caught, led police on a dramatic chase that played out like something straight out of a movie. On April 22nd, just days after Jaslyn's murder, police spotted Marion driving on the Eisenhower Expressway. The CPD's gang unit had been surveilling him, waiting for the right moment to make their move. But Marion wasn't about to go down without a fight. 
Breaking news tonight, a police chase and shooting on the Eisenhower ends with a murder suspect in custody. Chicago police tonight saying they have arrested the man who shot and killed seven-year-old Jaslyn Adams at a McDonald's drive-thru. This all happened at about four o'clock this afternoon near the 25th Street exit on the inbound side of the Ike. The expressway is starting to get moving again still five hours later. No word on when the roadway will reopen completely, but we see the cars involved in the crime scene are now on flatbed trucks. So it looks like crews are making progress tonight. That entire encounter started with police tracking the suspect in the western suburbs. Nate Rogers live for us on the west side with the breaking details. Nate? That's right, darling. Corey, Superintendent Brown had just made remarks about this case at a press conference earlier today. And right now, COPA is investigating how Chicago police brought this guy into custody. A complete gridlock along the 290 Expressway near Mannheim around 4 p.m. When officers closed in, Marion took off, speeding down the highway at dangerous speeds. The chase was wild, with Marion weaving through traffic, running red lights, and driving recklessly. At one point, he even tried to carjack a family that was stuck in traffic. The situation escalated quickly, and police were left with no choice but to open fire. Marion was hit multiple times and eventually taken into custody. Days after the murder, 18-year-old Marion Lewis led police on a chase which ended on the Eisenhower Expressway. Prosecutors say Lewis was driving the vehicle that Anderson and Gowdy used to fire at Jaslyn and her father. Investigators also tracked down 21-year-old Demond Gowdy, who prosecutors say fired several shots at the car. But for the past three months, though, and a $25,000 reward, the search for the final suspect, 22-year-old Devontae Anderson, continued. It's a lot of things go through your head when someone, when the suspect is still on the run. Finally, FBI investigators confirmed Anderson's arrest without incident Monday in Chicago, bringing some relief for the young girl's family that justice will be served. Keep pushing them, keep pushing them, keep pushing for Jasmine and all other little children that has been um, slain in the city of Chicago. Anderson had been previously charged with Jaslyn's first degree murder. A wild chase on the Eisenhower ends with gunfire and a wanted man. Right now, CBS 2's Charlie DeMar is live in Lawndale with the escape that started it all. Charlie. Brad and Erica, good evening. Since Sunday, the Chicago Police Department has actively been searching for whoever shot seven-year-old Jaslyn Adams. Tonight, we know that somebody connected to that shooting is in custody, recovering after being shot several times by police. They were following a homicide suspect, uh, which eventually crashed and attempted to carjack another vehicle. The chase for the man suspected of shooting and killing seven-year-old Jaslyn Adams ended in a crash on the side of the Eisenhower near Mannheim Road. He was shot by police several times. Inside Marion's car, investigators found two firearms, including an AK-47 style rifle, one of the weapons used in Jaslyn's murder. Marion was charged with over a dozen felonies, including first degree murder. His capture was a big break in the case, but it was only the beginning. Police still needed to track down the other two suspects, who were believed to be the actual shooters. CPD's gang unit was surveilling the man wanted in connection with Jaslyn Adams' death in a western suburb. As police followed behind, they say he tried getting away. The chase whipped past Glenn Turner's car. The vehicle that we see down the road here went flying past me. He had to be doing 40, 50, 60 at a red light when everybody stopped. And then about two seconds later, Villa Park police were after us. The driver ended up crashing on the Ike. Once his vehicle crashed, he then attempted to carjack a family that was in traffic on the freeway. After trying to carjack a car with a family inside, that's when police shot him in the arm. Two guns were found. Sources tell CBS2 investigators an AK-47 was recovered. The weapons possibly linked to Jaslyn's murder. Jaslyn was shot several times. She was found in a car surrounded by at least 30 shell casings, parked at a McDonald's drive through in the Homan Square neighborhood Sunday. Her father, Jonte Adams, was also in the car and shot. He survived. Is this police we retaliation? We'll update things on our media. Don't know. Okay. The investigation backed traffic up for miles. Drivers stuck in a standstill. Some resorted to turning around, driving the wrong way on the Eisenhower. Oh, I'm glad I'm not in it. It's, it's, it's a mess. Now, the man shot by police tonight, he is expected to survive. He was not identified, and it's unclear tonight what his role in that shooting of Jaslyn Adams is, but the superintendent did indicate that there are possibly more suspects 
wanted. It didn't take long for police to find Darnell. On May 1, 2021, just a week after Marion's arrest, Darnell was apprehended and charged with first-degree murder. Prosecutors argued that Darnell was one of the men who got out of the car and fired directly at the Infinity, where Jaslyn was sitting. Court records revealed that he had a history of violence, including multiple felony charges for robbery and gun possession. Despite being on bond at the time, Darnell allegedly continued his involvement in criminal activities, culminating in this tragic shooting. The FBI now is upping the ante, the reward for this man wanted in the murder of a seven-year-old Chicago girl. $25,000 is now being offered to help drag down Devante Anderson. The investigators say Anderson fired into a car waiting in a McDonald's drive through in Humboldt Park in April. But the search for the final suspect, Devante, dragged on for months, despite a $25,000 reward offered by the FBI and an intense manhunt. Devante managed to evade capture. Authorities were frustrated and the community grew anxious, wondering if he would ever be brought to justice. Then, in August 2021, the breakthrough finally came. Devante was arrested without incident in Chicago. His capture brought a sense of relief, not just for Jaslyn's family, but for the entire community. With all three suspects now in custody, the focus shifted to ensuring they were held accountable in court. Superintendent Brown saying police were pursuing a murder suspect when the suspect crashed his car, then attempted to carjack a family stuck in traffic. Officers confronted the suspect. The suspect was struck multiple times by the officer's weapons. Police say there were no other injuries. Also, two guns were recovered at the scene. Superintendent, did the suspect raise his weapon at police? What was the exchange? Yet to be determined by the investigation. Of course, as you know, uh, COPA does all administrative investigations of any police involved shooting, so that's yet to be determined. According to Brown, the man shot is a suspect in the case of seven-year-old Jocelyn Adams. Adams was shot and killed in a Westside McDonald's drive through while waiting with her dad on Sunday. So far, police have released no details about a motive. However, at a press conference just hours before today's police-involved confrontation, Brown had this to say. This is really about people who are living the criminal life and their conflicts and putting their precious babies in the car with them. Now that suspect's name has not yet been released. Um, we're still waiting to learn more um, about his, if he, ha if, he has any, um, if he has a criminal background or any other information police want to share. While the arrest provided some closure, the case also highlighted the deep-rooted issues in Chicago's criminal justice system. For one, how was it possible that men like Darnell and Marion, who were already facing serious charges, were out on the streets in the first place? The answer lies in the revolving door of lenient bail policies, overcrowded jails, and a court system overwhelmed by the sheer volume of cases. Darnell, for example, was out on bond for four separate felonies when he allegedly participated in Jaslyn's murder. He had been placed on GPS monitoring, but the conditions were loosened by a judge, allowing him to move more freely. Critics argue that this lack of strict oversight is what allowed him to continue engaging in criminal behavior. One of the men charged in the murder of a seven-year-old girl who was waiting in a McDonald's drive through with her father earlier this month. 21-year-old Damon Gowdy is facing first-degree murder charges, and he will not be released from jail anytime soon. WGN's Megan Dwyer joins us now with what happened in court today. Megan. Yeah, Ben and Micah, prosecutors say Gowdy opened fire at a McDonald's parking lot on a Sunday afternoon, not once, but twice. And he got caught in part because he and his friends posted a video of themselves on social media. Today in court, prosecutors revealed seven-year-old Jaslyn Adams was shot three times. She was in a tan infinity with tinted windows, sitting with her dad in a McDonald's drive through in Homan Square, April 18th. Adams died at Stroger Hospital. Her 29-year-old father, John Tay Adams, survived. I want my daughter's killers locked up. This case also brings into focus the broader issue of gang violence in Chicago. For decades, the city has struggled with a cycle of poverty, lack of resources, and systemic neglect in many neighborhoods. Gangs fill the void left by a failing system, offering young men a sense of belonging and protection in exchange for their loyalty. 
The result is a culture where violence is normalized and settling scores with guns is all too common. 18-year-old Marion Lewis was denied bond in court Sunday, charged with first-degree murder and more than a dozen other charges in the death of Jaslyn Adams. Prosecutors say he was the getaway driver for the two shooters who killed her. That baby was innocent. These babies are being robbed of their innocence. Seven years old, no chance. A small group gathered Sunday at the McDonald's where Jaslyn was shot a week earlier. She was with her dad in the front seat of his car at the drive through when prosecutors say two guys got out of Lewis's car and started shooting. Prosecutors say Lewis had threatened Jaslyn's dad on social media in the past. That piece of information led detectives to a social media account and video that connected him to this murder. Jaslyn's murder sparked outrage across Chicago. Protests, vigils, and community gatherings were held to honor her memory and demand an end to the violence. Activists and local leaders called for increased investment in education, job opportunities, and youth programs to provide alternatives to gang life. The tragedy also reignited the debate over police tactics, with some questioning whether more aggressive policing is the solution or if it only exacerbates the problem. Superintendent David Brown addressed the media shortly after the arrests, emphasizing that while the police would continue to hunt down those responsible, the root causes of violence need to be addressed. This is really about people who are living the criminal life and their conflicts, he said. But when you put your precious babies in the car with you, you're putting them in harm's way. But for many residents of Chicago's West Side, these words felt hollow. They've heard similar promises before, only to see little change. The reality is that without significant reforms and community-driven solutions, the violence will continue and more lives will be lost. Last Thursday, police arrested Lewis after they say he led him on a chase on the Eisenhower, crashed, tried to carjack a family, and shot at officers. They shot back, hitting him. Police say they found in his backpack the two guns used in the murder. Over the weekend, when police announced the charges against Lewis, Superintendent David Brown made it clear their search for suspects isn't over. You can run, but you can't hide. We are going to bring you to justice for this crime. The Adams family deserves nothing less. Lewis has two unrelated pen pending felony cases in juvenile court, burglary and looting and possession of a stolen motor vehicle. As the legal process moves forward, Jaslyn's family remains determined to see justice served. They know that nothing can bring their little girl back, but they want to ensure that those responsible face the full weight of the law. For them, this isn't just about punishing the shooters. It's about sending a message that this kind of senseless violence won't be tolerated. The court cases against Marion, Darnell, and Devante will likely take years to resolve, with defense attorneys expected to argue over everything from the reliability of witness testimonies to the admissibility of evidence. But regardless of how long it takes, Jaslyn's family and the broader community are prepared to fight for the justice she deserves. In the meantime, they continue to remember the joyful little girl whose life was taken far too soon. At vigils, pink balloons are released into the sky in her honor and her laughter echoes in the hearts of those who loved her. Jaslyn should have had a bright future ahead of her. She should be playing with friends, going to school, and dreaming big. Instead, her name has been added to a tragic list of young lives lost to gun violence in Chicago, a list that's far too long. Her death is a sobering reminder of the work that still needs to be done, not just in Chicago, but in communities across the country, to break the cycle of violence and ensure that no more children suffer the same fate. So, what do you think about Jaslyn's case? Should the perpetrators face the death penalty? What should be done to prevent these things from continuing to happen? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching everyone, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.